guys what is going on i hope you are all doing amazing because i know that i am obviously guys i have not been very active on youtube for the past few weeks and i do want to deeply apologize for that however i have been extremely busy designing my business and have been extra busy with schoolwork as well as track and obviously all of those other activities but nonetheless we are back and i have something very special for you guys if you have already read the channel discussion you will know that starting today i will be posting one video a day from today up until Saturday as kind of a spring break special. Anyway, for today's video, we will be flying in the Zibo 737-800 from Newark International Airport down to Boston Logan International Airport as United Airlines Flight 671. With all of that being said, the plane is started up in the FMC has been programmed as it most commonly is, so we are basically ready to finalize our before departure checklist. So with that, I will be seeing you guys in the plane. Good evening passengers, welcome aboard United Airlines Flight 671 with non-stop service down to Boston. The flight should take us about 1 hour and 10 minutes to do with 171 passengers on board and a cruising altitude of 21,000 feet. Once again, the FMC has been programmed so we are ready to finish up some of our checklists and we'll be on our way. Alright guys, so obviously our before starting checklist would not be complete without a quick overview of our FMC. So now that we are down here at our FMC, you can clearly see that our origin airport is KEWR for Newark and our destination airport is KBOS for Boston and obviously we are flying as United Airlines Flight 671. So obviously for our departure here, we are departing off of runway 22 right, however we are not using any SIDs or departures for today's flight and we'll just be kind of going off of our knowledge to make it on route and hopefully we should make it to Boston just the same. Also, we are arriving on the Roebuck to arrival with the Merit Transition, and we are doing an ILS for runway 4, right? That being said, the FMC has been reviewed, and we are set to continue some of our before-star checklists. Alright guys, so to start things off, we are going to go ahead and release our parking brake so we can go ahead and clear our grand handling so those guys are not in our way for our pushback, so we can go ahead, release our parking brake, and set it again. And with that, we are set to begin some of our before start checklist. So we can go ahead and begin by turning all of our fuel pumps to their off position. Our electric hydraulic pumps come on. We can turn our anti collision lights to their off position. Our trims are already set, so we do not have to worry about those guys. And we can go ahead and turn our packs off for push and start. And with that, guys, we are pretty much set to go ahead and call for our pushback. So we can go ahead hit start pushback. I did already pre-plan it, so we do not have to worry about any of that. Ground to cockpit. Tow is driving up. Alright, so obviously our tow is driving up. There you can see it. So I will be seeing you guys when we are ready to push back. Alright guys, so our tug has connected fully, so we are going to go ahead, release our parking brake. Starting pushback, and you may start engines. He's going to go ahead, start pushing us back, and we have been cleared to start our engine, so we will go ahead, and why not just start it now? We'll go ahead and, as we always do, start with engine 2 so we can go ahead set engine 2 to the ground position and wait for engine 2 to spool up to 25%. Alright guys, so there you can see is 25% so we can go ahead, introduce fuel to engine 2 and wait for engine 2 to hopefully successfully start up. Alright guys, so our engine 2 has successfully started up so we can go ahead and start our engine 1. We can set engine 1 to the ground position and once again wait for engine 1 to start up and reach 25%. Alright guys, we have just come up on 25%. We can go ahead and introduce fuel to engine 1 and just go ahead and wait for engine 1 to start up. Alright guys, so engine 1 has successfully started up so we can go ahead and begin some checklists. So to begin our checklist, we can go ahead and turn both of our generators on. We can turn our pilot static heat or probe switches on, whatever you want to call them. We can turn our anti-ice switches you know what, no, we don't need those guys for today's flight. We can go ahead and set our packs to auto. Isolation valve can come to auto. We can turn our APU bleed off and our actual APU off. And we can go ahead and while we're waiting for our pushback to continue, we can go ahead and set flaps to their takeoff position of flaps five. We can go ahead and wait for our pushback to complete. All right guys, so now that our pushback has been completed, we can go ahead and start our before taxi checklist. So we can go ahead, look down here at our controls, and we can go full back, looks good, full forward, looks good, full right, and full left, both guys look good like that. And we can go rudder full right, looks good, and rudder full left. All that looks good. We can go ahead and turn our runway turnoff lights on. 
and our taxi lights on, we can go ahead and turn our dome light to its off position so we are not blinded. And go ahead and turn Probably our wing lights on. Push. And we can finally turn on our terrain. So we have that for our flight. We can go ahead now, release our parking brake, and taxi ourselves to runway 22. All right, we can perform a little bit of a brakes test here. We can go ahead, tap our brakes, they look good. And with that, we can continue taxiing to runway 22. All right, guys, so as you can see, we are approaching runway 22 right, so we can go ahead and start slowing down little bit here and we can come to a complete stop here's good enough we can just go ahead and hold our tow brakes as you can see I did turn back on my dome light because I could not see a thing but anyway to get started we can go ahead and turn all of our landing lights on we can turn all of our taxi lights to their off position and we can turn our position light to strobe and steady and with that we are finally set to go ahead and actually shut off the dome light so we can go ahead and do that now and taxi on to runway 22 right. Everything looks clear, so we are safe there. All right, with that, we can go ahead, stabilize our engines. Right there, and we can go full throttle. Try to stay lined up here. Once again, I don't know if you could tell, our V speeds did not load, so I'm just shooting for about 130 knots. knots for our rotation speed. Alright, if you want to rotate, we can go ahead. Pull up a little bit here. Gear up. A little bit of a gusty departure, not gonna lie. But nonetheless, we are out in the air. trying to hold the nose here at about 50 degrees and there's a thousand we can go ahead and drop the nose a little bit and we can go ahead and start making our left hand turn and 1500 we can go ahead and put our flaps up and set our auto brakes back to their off position we can go ahead turn on our auto throttle and turn on our speed we can also engage the nav our actual autopilot and that should take care of all that. We can go ahead and shut our gear off so that's good for that part of the flight. And with that, everything looks good. I'd call that successful departure out of Newark. And so we have just crossed through 10,000 feet as you can see so we are going to go ahead and put all of our landing lights to their off position. We will also go ahead and turn our position lights to their steady position, turn our passing seatbelt lights off for comfort of our passengers. We'll also go ahead and set the engine start switches to their auto position and that is it until 18,000 feet so I will see you guys then. Also, one more thing I did forget to do is shut the wing lights off so we can go ahead and shut those guys off as well as our logo lights and our real well lights. And that is it for so <laughs> the
approximately 10 nautical miles away from our top of the descent, I'm going to go ahead and begin filing the information for our actual descent. So I will be using vertical speed for today's approach rather than VNAV, and so to set up for that, I will be going ahead and putting in my next altitude restriction. So to start things off, I will be setting in 17,100 feet as well as vertical speed going down at about 1,500 feet per minute, which is a fair amount of descent. And also at this time, I will be setting my engine star switches to their continuous position, and that is it until we reach 17,100 feet. All right, guys, so two things we have to do right now. The first thing is to set our altimeter so we can go ahead and take our altimeters off of standard and set Boston's altimeter, which is 3015 like that. Also, we have to go down to 16,100 feet, so we can go ahead and set 16,100 feet. That is it until we reach that altitude restriction. Alright guys, one more thing we have to do is we are set on altitude, but we are not set on speed, so we have to go ahead and drop our speed to 260 knots. That is it for a little while. Alright guys, I am going to prepare for the descent to my next altitude restriction, so I'm going to go ahead and in my altitude box, I'm going to set 10,800 feet right there. And I'm going to go ahead and start descending at about 2,000 feet per minute this time. Right there, and that is good for this part of the descent. So I am going to go ahead now and start preparing for my next descent. So I'm going to go ahead and set my next altitude restriction, which is 9,000 feet. So we can go ahead and set that guy there and just continue going down at about 2,000 feet per minute. Also, since we are going to be crossing through 10,000 feet, I'm gonna go ahead and turn all of my landing lights on. Like so, I'm gonna turn on my runway turnoff lights and set my position lights to stroke and steady. And with that, I'm also going to go ahead and turn my seatbelt signs to their on position, as well as set my approach ref, so obviously that guy looks good. We will be flying a flaps 40 landing, so we can go ahead and set. Flaps 40 slash 56 right there. Plus the wing correction will leave us with a V ref of 131 knots. So we can go ahead and with 131 knots for our V ref. Also, one more thing we do have to do at this time is reduce our speed to 220 knots right there. And also, I'm going to go ahead and set my auto brakes to 1 right there for our descent. Alright, guys, we do have to continue our descent now, so I'm going to go ahead and drop this guy. 8,000, no, sorry, 7,000 feet right there, and I'm going to go down at once again about 2,000 feet per minute, just so we make it there on time. Also, I have to drop my speed to 210 knots, so I can go ahead and set 210 knots right there. And once again, I will go ahead and start preparing for my next altitude restriction, so I'm going to go ahead and set this guy to 6,000 feet right there, and everything there looks good for the rest of our approach pretty much. Alright guys, we do still have a few more altitude restrictions for our descent, so I'm going to go ahead and set my next one, which is 2,000 feet, so we can go ahead and set 2,000 feet right there and go down at about 2,000 feet per minute. Actually, we'll go 2,200 feet per minute because, as you can see, the airport is right up there. And also, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and set my flaps to flaps 2, and let's just kind of go ahead and wait for 22. Alright guys, I am going to go ahead and set flaps to flaps 10, as well as reduce my speed to 170 knots. Alright guys, now at this time, I'm going to go ahead and set my flaps to flaps 15, and I'm going to go ahead and arm my speed brakes, and everything there looks good for a while. As you can see, I did set up the ILS, so we can go ahead and set that once the time is right, which is coming up, and we'll be guided in nicely for a beautiful approach. Alright guys, right now I am going to go ahead and set my logo lights and wing lights to their on position, and why not just turn on my real low lights for the ground crew when we do land, and everything looks good right now. I'll go ahead and set my flaps to position 25, and that should be good for a little bit of time. Alright guys, I'm going to go ahead now and set my V rep of 131 knots. Right here as well as set my flaps to full and I am also at this time going to be dropping my landing gear so I'm going to go ahead and set my landing gear in down position and as you can see I have the map up I'm just waiting 
until I get into the sh into the threshold, so I can go ahead and on my bird trap. Because as you can see, a thick layer of clouds just covered us. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wait for a second. Alright, guys, I am actually gonna go ahead and increase my speed to 140 knots, just so we are not too slow. And we are in the threshold, so I'm gonna go ahead and arm the approach. And hopefully, yep, there we go. We should be guided in nicely. Alright, guys. So as you can see down here on the little display. We are going to have a crosswind landing, uh, and you can kind of see it as the way we're flying, so we will see how that goes. Alright guys, I am going to go ahead and disengage my auto throttle and kind of take control of the thrust myself. And now I'm going to go ahead and disengage the autopilot and just try to get the plane down smoothly. Once again, we're looking for a V-Rep of about 131 knots. Landing. Quite slow. Or a little bit low, just don't know. To be too low. 200. 200. We don't want to have another float because that would definitely not be good. Again, I get those a lot, so. 50, 40, 30, Idle thrust. 20, 10. Nose. And we are down, reversers out. Jeez, that was a really windy approach. We can go ahead and try to stay lined up here. That's what we can. Knots. And there's 70 manual braking and reverse thrust in. Guys, welcome to Boston. That was definitely a tricky approach, not gonna lie, very, very windy and a little bit intense later on. Thank goodness though for ILS because I don't know how well I would have done without it. Anyway, nonetheless, we are here. We got good landing. We can go ahead and put all our flaps up. And we can go ahead and put our speed brakes back to their up position. Alright, we are going to go ahead and start our APQ. So we can go ahead and set that to the start position right there. And there's the low oil pressure. I'm going to go ahead and try to find here. There we go, the dome light. There we go, now we have a little bit more light here, so we are okay there. We can go ahead and turn our probe heat switches off, and let's just continue taxiing to our ramp. Right, guys we can go ahead and take this taxiway right here also we can go ahead and shut all of our landing lights off runway turn off lights actually no taxi lights and runway turn off lights can come on engine start switches can go back to auto we can turn on our AP generators like so and there's the united gates up there as you can probably see so we're just going to go ahead and continue taxiing up to there all right guys we're going to pull in right next to this what looks like a triple seven uh oh baggage car there. Alright. Good. We can go ahead and set our position light. It's real good steady. Looks good how it is. Try to slow down a little bit. Alright. That looks good right there. We can go ahead and set our parking brake like so. We can go ahead and kill both of our engines. That looks good. Alright, we can go ahead and shut our passenger signs off. And we can go ahead and shut our electric hydraulic pumps off. Window heaters can all come off. Fuel pumps can come off. Set the back guy right there. Anti-collision light off. Wing. All those guys. We can turn all of our taxi lights off. We do not need them. And with that, we can turn our packs off. And that leaves the plane in pretty much all right guys this is going to be the end of the video i do as always hope you enjoyed it if you did do be sure to subscribe if you're not already and hit that like button for more videos the total flight time for today's flight was 36 minutes which brings us in about a half hour earlier than what i was expecting once again guys thank you so much for watching and i'll be seeing you guys tomorrow with a brand new video